I grew up in Melbourne and I also spent school holidays at Sorrento, uh, the beach, so I was really lucky that I could be down there growing up and uh, being with water and uh, have bare feet walking around and being able to go out and paint there and um, I always remember coming back to school and feeling like I um, don't really want to be there with my new school shoes and uh, feeling in the heat of summer I'd rather be uh, out gardening or you know going outside and being with nature and painting at the beach and uh, being in a canoe or on a paddleboard or something like that. I have three sisters and it, painting was a great way of getting um, away and make another world for myself and, I, and, and it was something that I enjoyed and um, yeah and then I also I suppose um, I was wondering what I'd be doing uh, growing up um, at the, as a job and I remember going, walking past a gallery and, and seeing paintings on the wall and thought oh yeah that some, you know, people do this. You know, I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll, do, I'll, I'll, there's something I can do. So I um, managed to. I had some great um, art teachers at school and at uh, art school. They, um, yeah, they, and I've, I've picked up lots of from different people. I picked up different ideas from them and, that I've. I've used for 50 years since I've painted. One of them was um, Bill Kelly from uh, the VCA. I was having trouble with the um, composition, like I'd do a painting and part of the head would end up out of the, um, the picture or something like something um, annoying like that. So I'd, I'd, you'd be wasting doing all the painting. So he said it'd be better just to draw what you, the composition and so it's all set out. You're treating the, the, um, the whole picture is like a community so it's it, it became it becomes one um, to, um, so it's so like if you if you're spending too much time on a, an area um, uh, so it, it's hard to, to actually to see if it's working or not or you so it's actually good to go somewhere else in the picture and then you come back and have another uh, have a fresh look at it it's like climbing a mountain and you don't go directly to the top you go to have base one which is like the sketch of the picture and then base two like filling in parts of it at the back and the foreground and then you just work your way around and then base three you slowly resolve the painting and so each part before helps the next part if i'm if i'm painting something to to look i, I want to look like something i don't actually try and make it look like that picture I actually put the marks where the best in the best possible place and the actual painting paints itself I just had a, a show of um, beach paintings of Sorrento and then last year I had one of still lifes and then I got to the beginning of this year and I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but I've always wanted to go out and paint a plain air rather than using, having the photos. And I've been um, inspired by Fred Williams and um, other, other painters. So I just uh, try to, to do similar things to what I'm doing in a landscape. I've started, we've started, um, in the last few months we're, we're in winter and um, <laughs> we'll, we'll keep at it but we'll, we'll probably keep going for a year and uh, continue doing um, landscapes where I can play around with uh, uh, realism and abstraction and uh, um, yeah and just yeah, loosen it up and so there's some um, yeah, that's the, that's, that's the aim, so I'll keep up with that.
I did a series of paintings around, mainly around Point King, where I'd be studying the different times of the day or different weather that was around, you know, if it was dull or sunny. And and I'd, they, they, were, they were more photographic and like, and I'd, I'd start with a sketch with those ones, I'd start with a photo and then I'd come back and see, see which photos I'd like and then I'd, I'd add uh, or crop them depending which was a good subject. And I was mainly doing points and piers and then, so I, I'd fill them in with the de detail of, um, or sketch them in, and then I'd put layers of paint on the top of them and um, uh, lo it, loosely, they look quite loose when you look close at them, uh, but when you stand back, everything was in the right place. We bought a um, mirror dinghy and we renovated it for, for six months and it's about 50 years old. And uh, I read a book called um, Cap The Adventures of Captain Jack LaCroix and it was about a, a guy from Adelaide who taught English and drama in Wales. And he went on a journey on a mirror dinghy from the Wales locks along the locks, rowing and sailing through England as well, and was talking all about the wonderful books that were written around, like, Three Men in a Boat. Uh, so we thought, oh, that'd be great. We could um, go all the way from the Yarra and sail and row the boat out through Port Melbourne and then turn left and go along the, like Brighton and all the way around to Sorrento and um, or stopping maybe at friends um, rather than sleeping in a sleeping bag along the way and then we'd um, cross the heads and come along to Queenscliff and then and this guy he was the last I heard was teaching English at John Grammar and we could call in and see him and um, maybe Get, continue back to Melbourne, and we're learning sa learning how to sail at the same time, which is uh, which is fun. But but it's it's a lot of requires a lot of maintenance because um, ev everything's kept falling apart. But um, the next outing was from Port Melbourne to um, Wils uh, Williamstown, and um, and we didn't. We've actually we, one time the rudder's fallen off, but yeah, we just. Yeah, we're improvising a bit like being an artist the whole time. You, your um, necessities, the mother of invention. After the the paintings of the it was called Water on the Other Side. The exhibition I had, I did um, paintings of spring, summer. Um, autumn and winter, influenced by um, my partner Nina, who's great with design and, uh, and she'd set up arrangements of flowers and things she's collected from overseas, like um, pots and vases and wooden bowls and just lovely shapes and uh, patterns and things. So I'd, and so I, um, she'd set up an arrangement and I'd and then go off to work and I'd grab it and take it in and um, photograph it in my studio and and then play around with um, it and take photos of it. And most of them were um, start off with just put, putting them, making them simple, like putting them on a white cloth with a, a grey charcoal background. Jeffrey Smart, he was really good at uh, how he made your eye come into the picture. He, there was a, a painting I did of um, a Clark pool, and I, did, I was at an art school and he came and saw it and I had, uh, it was just mainly a pool and then there was a, a ladder um, on one side, on the right side and he saw it and, um, and he said, oh, you should move the, the ladder to the other side uh, because that's where you enter the painting 
from the left. If you're if you're doing something that's really detailed, after a while you can't really see what you're doing. You spend too much time in that area. Um, it's always keeping your your eyes fresh and look in, and you go to a different part of the picture. That it's sort of um, the paintings actually is like talking to you and saying, "Hey, what about me? I'm what about doing some some work over here? You know, you're neglecting me this area." And so you go off and do some of that area and then and then maybe another part of the painting usually it can tell you it'll stand out saying oh that's that's not that's not in the right place or that's not the right color and that's um that how that's a good way of resolving it unless it it's unresolvable and, <laughs> and hopefully that doesn't happen very often <laughs> <laughs>